what if I told you you can save several hundred dollars on high-end CPU performance, at least as far as gaming is concerned? Is the new Raptor Lake-based Intel Core i5 13600K featuring 14 cores and 20 threads worthy of the title Masterpiece of a CPU? Compared to this, AMD might have a bit of a hard time. But both Intel as well as AMD have their pros and cons here. Some of which is fairly obvious, some not so much. Price In early to mid-December 2022, on the 13600K, you're spending about 320 to 330 US dollars. A CPU you most likely can compare that processor with might be AMD's 7700X, coming in at 350 to 400 dollars. So it does cost a little more than Intel's part does, but not by a lot. Where exactly do these two CPU arch enemies, Intel and AMD, score at the end of the day, and which of the two is the better choice for you? Stay tuned and don't miss this exciting CPU battle. Thanks once again goes out to the online shop equipper for getting a hold of all these CPUs for my testing. All of that I paid out of my very own pocket. Hashtag not sponsored. Architecture. I know, I keep repeating myself, but I just want to make it clear that Raptor Lake, just as it was the case with Intel's 12th gen parts, is making use of a hybrid architecture. Meaning, we don't just get ordinary classic high performance cores, and that's it, as it's the case with AMD. No, instead we see a mix of performance and efficiency cores to achieve some sort of sweet spot between performance and power efficiency. If Team Blue really succeeds here, we'll soon see. Today's i5 processor comes equipped with 6P cores along with 8E cores, which are known to not support hyperthreading. Additionally, I'd like to point out that 13th gen CPUs can be run on motherboards sporting a 600 series chipset, although you will need to update the BIOS first. Furthermore, those of you on a tight budget could still reuse your DDR4 RAM. You are therefore not forced to buy DDR5 memory, even though you will lose out on some CPU performance by going with DDR4. Test setup. This time around, for the 13600K, I've decided to go for a rather more exotic motherboard, that being the ASRock Z790 PG ITX TB4, so obviously an ITX board with the Z790 chipset. Needless to say, I will also go for some optimizations and fine-tuning in terms of power limits here too, to increase overall efficiency. For the DDR5 memory, I'm going with my usual Kingston Fury Beast RGB, clocked at 6000 MHz, 32GB and CL36 timings. Taking on the cooling duty is the AIO liquid cooler by Be Quiet, namely the Pure Loop 2 FX 360mm. Last but not least, the Pixel Accelerator being the ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC to help eliminate the nastiest of GPU bottlenecks out there. Optimization and clock speeds. I have to mention here too that it's unfortunately quite common for the new CPU's power limits to be all over the place between all those motherboards available. So it's not uncommon for some boards to allow the CPU to draw more power than the CPU manufacturer Intel has actually had in mind for it. This can have a positive impact on overall performance, but you won't be happy about its side effects, higher power draw and temperatures. So this time around I'm doing things a little differently. For one, I will be testing the configuration the motherboard automatically intends for the CPU, and on the other hand, I'll set the exact power limit values officially specified by Intel. For the maximum, I'm therefore going for those official 181 watts, and for the base, 125 watts. Differences between these two settings, there were none for me. At full load, we're therefore talking of 5.1 GHz for the P cores and 3.9 GHz as far as E cores are concerned. We're even witnessing the official Intel boost clocks in the multi-core test. That's pretty awesome. And no, don't worry, I made sure multi-core enhancement was disabled. Otherwise, we'd be cheating our way up with turbo clock speeds. 
With that in mind, we even see the same clock speeds in games. So it's time to take on the fight against AMD, I guess. Things are about to get exciting now. Performance, productivity. Starting with my favorite rendering game, Cinebench R23. This is where the 13600K, unsurprisingly, does incredibly well thanks to its 14 cores and can distance itself from the competitor 7700X by 23%. When keeping in mind the price, this puts AMD in a bad spot. There is no winner in the single core test though, Intel and AMD are on par here. Somewhat comparable performance both a 13600K and 7700X offer in the 7-zip benchmark. Intel is faster by a mere 3% only. A lead of nearly 10% for the i5 model can be seen in the V-Ray 5 rendering benchmark. Despite the 7700X having fewer cores overall, it's keeping up fairly nicely however. In the Corona rendering benchmark, the 13600K here too remains the king in the mid-range department. AMD is catching up with their 7700X in the Blender test. Nonetheless, the Ryzen counterpart drops behind by about 13%. The 13600K can hold its position in the Handbrake test as well. Sure, the 7700X is speedy, but the i5 certainly is having the edge here. In the final video rendering test, Vegas Pro 20, the 7700X catches up nicely. There are only a few percent separating Intel and AMD here. This is where we are apparently also seeing the 13600K's first hardship. However, my settings have caused it to behave that way. I'd like to point out that we are talking of a nearly 10 minute rendering run. The 181 watt power limit is not meant to be active for that long and therefore falls back on its 125 watt base limit. If you leave the base power limit untouched, the 181 watts are active indefinitely. So at the end of the day, it comes down to your settings within the BIOS. Gaming. In the Synthetic 3 Mark Time Spy test, the 13600K positions itself really well it seems. But since AMD often is treated so unfairly here, we'll skip right to a real game title that is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The 13600K, in terms of average FPS and 1% lows, hardly is any slower than the more expensive Intel parts. It should be noted though that AMD basically is just as good here and when inspecting closely even manages slightly higher 1% lows with their 7700X. In the end, we are more so talking of a tie. Things are more clear in Borderlands 3, leading to the i5 performing roughly 4% better than the 7700X. In Cyberpunk 2077, we witness our usual gap between AMD and Intel. The 13600K in that title is about 11% faster than AMD's counterpart. We are moving on to Far Cry 6, another game that seems to favor Intel overall. A 7700X is almost 10% slower than today's i5 processor. Nonetheless, we certainly do see good performance by these new Ryzen chips as well. Things are taking a more positive turn for AMD in the racing game Forza Horizon 5. With their 7700X, AMD is about 5% ahead of the 13600K, and on top of that, Team Red, or Orange if you will, in those 1% lows is leading by a whopping 24%. In the classic GTA 5, results are boring. We, for the majority of the CPUs, see a tie. In Horizon Zero Dawn, AMD is going strong again, resulting in the 7700X and even 7600X being nearly 7% faster than the 13600K. A 7700X even delivers noticeably higher 1% lows. Intel reclaims its throne in the mid-range tier with their 13600K in the game Metro Exodus. AMD is dropping behind by a little over 4% not that big of a deal. We see a quite noticeable gap in Red Dead Redemption 2 though, the i5 catapulting itself to the top with a lead of 10%. In the slightly older Rise of the Tomb Raider, we get to see a classic tie. This is where Intel and AMD CPUs are going wild against each other in a good way. The 13600K is ever so slightly ahead of the 7700X in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, however. At the end of the day, barely worth the mention though. 
gaming average FPS. Obviously, the 13600K and those 11 games tested, on average, is taking the upper hand. Although it should be noted that it's just 4 FPS separating the 7700X from the i5. The 1% lows are looking great on both CPUs. When comparing against the cheaper Ryzen 5 7600X, we start dropping behind a bit more, but minimally to be honest. So in theory, Intel for sure is the overall winner here, but on average, I wouldn't really claim it's a noteworthy victory. Because both Intel as well as AMD are offering incredible gaming performance right now and are comparable. New important variables can be found in the following test though. Power consumption and temperatures. A 13600K, surprisingly in its two tested power limit configurations, is consuming about the same amount of power. In return, we get almost identical performance. You should however not ignore the fact that a 13600K roughly draws as much power as a Ryzen 9 7900X by AMD does, part of the next higher performance tier. So a 7700X in my test, total system measured, consumes about 80 watts less power. That's a whopping 26%. That's a lot. On the other hand, Intel is consuming noticeably less at idle. That's where the i5 is more efficient by 15 watts, or about 18-19%. A fairly interesting picture we witness in the test power consumption while gaming. While the 13600K all in all, in theory, delivers slightly better gaming performance, at stock settings it also draws 25 watts more power. Luckily, temperatures can somewhat be kept under control. 89 degrees Celsius at max, with a 360mm AIO liquid cooler, might still appear a little excessive for an i5 processor, but AMD at stock settings is running even slightly hotter. What impresses me about today's CPU though, is the fact that it allows for lots of optimizations. With just a few simple tweaks within the BIOS, the power draw can be reduced drastically. And I haven't even touched the power limit yet this time around. I've just gone straight for undervolting and made sure everything was still 100% stable. The power draw in my specific case went down by a whopping 26%. That optimization even led to a max temperature of only 66 degrees. That's great. There was no performance loss whatsoever, I care a lot about that. I do however have to remind you that similar optimizations can be done with the 7700X as well. So to be perfectly fair, an optimized AMD CPU would lead to even more appealing power consumption. Which is why I'm equally as disappointed in both CPU manufacturers for going for or allowing for such high power limits and voltages for their CPUs. This simply results in unnecessary additional costs for the average consumer in the long term. That easily could have been avoided. Conclusion Even though I've criticized Intel's higher power consumption, we shouldn't let the 13600 case overall higher performance in rendering and productivity workloads go unnoticed as opposed to AMD's 7700X. So those of you that wish to aim for maximum power efficiency while rendering probably should choose the Ryzen 7. Those on the other hand that aim to complete those rendering projects a bit faster choose the Core i5 and accept the higher power draw. This also applies to the CPUs in their optimized states. When it comes to gaming, I can recommend both the 13600K and 7700X equally. Intel has a minimal lead over AMD, but in the end, both mid-range CPUs prove once more that in order to achieve great gaming performance, you do not necessarily have to spend the extra money on a high-end model. All in all, Intel's offering is ever so slightly cheaper right now. Both the CPU and motherboard usually go for less than what can be seen for AMD's platform. On the other hand, in Intel's case we've already reached the final stage of the LJ1700 socket. Any future upgrade paths are not to be expected here, whereas with the fresh AIM-5 platform we should apparently get support until 2025 with upgrades in between. One more drawback on Intel's side, we are being offered fewer PCIe lanes. It's not that relevant yet, and for the mid-range, probably not that big of a deal anyway. 
So the bottom line is, if you simply don't care about LJ1700 being in its final stages right now in the present from a price to performance perspective, the Core i5-13600K appears to be a great deal. At the end of the day, it comes down to pricing. Both A7700X and 13600 k are able to put a smile on a lot of people's faces. While Intel and AMD aren't doing everything right, they at least both offer us good options to pick from. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.